Hey there, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna continue the teardown inspection of the TH-475 by digging into the valve body. So I'll go cover the valve trains real quick and then we'll get into it. So here is your 1-2 valve train. It's gonna be your 1-2 shift valve. And then here you're gonna have a sleeve with either a 1-2 regulator valve or a 1-2 modulator valve. Uh, it's gonna vary based on application. And like I said, I've not been into these before, so we'll see what we have. Uh, there's gonna be a sleeve and then a roll pin. Then this is going to be your 2-3 valve train, so 2-3 shift valve inboard, and then your 2-3 modulator valve, sleeve, spring, and roll pin. And then over here you have your 3-2 valve, uh, your, uh, it's called a 3-2 pin, and then a bore plug, spring, and a roll pin. Okay, on the other side we have our 1-2 accumulator valve train. So in some models there's a primary and a secondary valve, each with their own spring, and then you have a bore plug and a roll pin holding it all in. So this valve train here is gonna be our detent and detent regulator valves. Uh, there's a fairly lengthy inboard spring here, and then you have your valve and your um, outboard valve. I'm not gonna take this valve train out. I talked a little bit about this on the primary teardown video, but um, in my experience, Sometimes uh, I'd say enough to justify me not doing this. That inboard valve and spring will not want to go back into position. Um, reason being is that the uh, bore in this location, at least the mouth of it, sometimes is that around, so the valve literally won't go back in. And I mean, a couple of times I've had to do some very, very risky things like drill out the uh, bore, just open it up a little bit so that I can get that valve back in there. And you know, it's one of those deals where. If you don't do it right, if you slip a little bit or you do you use the wrong size drill bit, you know, um, you, know, you can ruin the valve body. So uh, I'll flash a picture on the screen so you can see what the arrangement looks like, what the order is. But uh, suffice to say, unless you have to take this valve train out, um, I would just leave it alone. As long as when you're, you know, prying on the valves back and forth with a flat, flat blade screwdriver, um, if it's their return to position, you know, nothing's dragging on you, nothing feels weird, just leave it alone. I'm gonna flip it over. So this is our 2-3 accumulator piston and um, obviously a plastic piston you will replace. Uh, just a real quick blurb about these pistons. There is an early and a late design and that coincides with the design of the um, you know intermediate uh, manual second band servo. So when you see these kind of little raised bosses here, um, there's gonna be three of them. Uh, this indicates that this is a late design uh, piston, so second design. It must um, be installed with a late design servo for the band. If you mix and match uh, a late design piston for the 2-3 accumulator and a uh, early design servo piston, then you're going to have problems with potentially uh, interference fitting and things not working right. The earlier pistons for the servo had like two half moon crescent type bosses or embossments raised and so they would interfere with these bosses here in the 2-3 accumulator piston. So it's just something to be mindful of. Um, when you go to purchase your aluminum piston, you wanna make sure it looks just like this if that's what your original piston looks like. And the main problem with these when you go back with them is right there um, in the location where the E-clip is, that's where they'll crack. And it's just not worth the time. Anyway, let me go ahead and get set up here and we'll begin. All right, I have another TH400 valve body disassembly video and um, an assembly video, but I'm gonna film the assembly of this one as well. Uh, that one was shot with my cell phone, and I'll be honest, I'm not real crazy about the quality. So um, this one, I'm using a better camera. So it should be a little bit easier to watch and the quality in terms of picture and you know clarity and sharpness and all that should be markedly better than what you saw in the cell phone video. So. At least I'm hoping that's the case. All right, so here is the uh, one, two valve train. So right along in here. Okay, there's gonna be a spring in between these two, uh, these two valves. So you're just gonna have to find a spot to pry on. And sometimes you have to kind of tag team it. So. You gotta basically push that valve, um, you know, pry it forward as much as you can to get this sleeve started. 
And then once it's started, you can usually just force it out with a, a pick. You know, you'll get like a, you know, you'll get like a, a you know, a, a channel or a slot exposed where you can put your small screwdriver in there and get it out. Okay, the main thing with these older valve bodies is you don't want to force anything. You know, just use a variety of screwdrivers and picks and, you know, whatever else you need to, to try and get it out without causing any damage to either the, you know, valve or the sleeve or um, anything else. Okay, so this is going to be your 1-2 regulator valve. Okay, there's a sleeve, then here's your spring, and then this is captured. And then you have your one-two shift valve still in here. All right, that hung up just a little bit. I'm probably gonna polish all these bores with bench buddies just to make sure that the valves just drop back in under their own weight. And that's what you want when you go back together with them. If they're, if they're not doing that, then uh, chances are the, uh, either the valve or the bore itself needs you know, some sort of treatment to, uh, you know, to smooth things out. Okay, this thing's under some spring tension, so when you take off your, take out your uh, punch, just have your thumb here on the uh, spring so it doesn't go flying across the room. Let's start to flip it over. Got a pry point here. And we're gonna go all the way back behind the 3-2 shift valve to see if we can push it forward, push everything forward and out of the bore. I say 3-2, I meant 2-3. This is the 2-3. Again, looks like we're going to have to kind of play tag team here. There it goes. It's okay if the sleeve itself is kind of, you know, difficult to get out. I mean, that's, that's normal, that's fine. But if the valve is dragging, you want to make sure you polish the bore or if you have to in more extreme cases sand the valve so that it's not going back in like that because otherwise you know you're going to have inconsistent um, shifting issues okay okay two three modulator valve and then you have your 2-3 shift valve and spring. Notice here the 2-3 uh, shift valve, it's got a little um, kind of a helicoil or helical pattern there. Okay, next is the 3-2 uh, the valve train. So you get your 3-2 downshift valve and then your 3-2 pin and then your spring bore plug and then your retaining roll pin. Okay, same deal, this is gonna be under spring tension. So just stick a thumb there or a finger. 
Okay, the uh, bore plug is such that the side with the little hole, the crater, faces out. And the back side's flat. Okay, there's the 3-2 uh, valve. Looks like it's a little shy. Does not want to come out into the light. Okay, looks like a dumbbell. So it does not matter which way this thing goes back in. It's exactly the same. I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to get this out of the way so that we have a fresh towel here and then um, I'll go ahead and resume. All right, so the only other valve train we're going to take out of this valve body is the 0 one 2 accumulator valve train. Uh, like I said, we're going to leave the D10, D10 regulator valve in there. Um, we'll just check them, make sure that they're moving free like they should be. So. I right, let me make sure that that's visible. And sometimes you gotta tap this, this roll pin out. And there's not too much spring tension in here, but you still wanna make sure that you're not, um, you know, totally oblivious to it. I mean, these very rarely fly out on me. So you notice you have kind of an indentation, a crater that's always gonna face out. And then you have your valves. As your spring. Okay, so like I said, some of these models, they're gonna be different just depending on uh, what you're working with. So in this case, um, we just have the valve, the one spring, the bore plug, and the retainer pin, and that's it. All right, um, I'm gonna go to the press to take out the 3-2 uh, accumulator piston, and 2-3 uh, accumulator piston, what did I say, 3-2? I uh, can't remember. Um, so what we're gonna need to do is press down on this piston so that it's fully collapsed below flush so that we can get out that little E-clip there. So uh, I'll bring the camera over and we'll you know, film it and then uh, that'll be it. All right, we have everything chucked up in the press. As you can see, I have a, you know, kind of a contraption here, a combination of press tools. And because the valve body is real centrically shaped, uh, I have to put something underneath to kind of level it out a little bit. Uh, one thing you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that you know exactly where the opening is for that little E-clip. And in this case, the opening is in this direction. And um, I'm going to be pushing it with a screwdriver, you know, in this direction. So it's going to come out on this side. Um, I'll put the uh, uh, specific Kentmore tooling numbers if you're interested in the uh, annotations. But um, basically, you need something that has a cutout like this that gives you access to that little E-clip. Uh, otherwise, you're never going to get it out. All right, let me see if I can move it over so you can actually see um, the e clip in its entirety. Okay, there it is. So I'm just going to go in with my screwdriver and I'm going to pry it rearward so that I can free it up. Maybe best to get it from the back side.
All right, there it goes. Okay, those pistons can be a little tricky to get out sometimes, even with the press. Um, you know, I was fumbling around with it for a little bit there, but um, ended up using the uh, pick and a flatbed screwdriver to kind of just um, pry it out. Uh, it just kept wanting to go around, you know, it's a little slot here in the, uh, in the guide pin. So um, here's the valve trains all laid out. All right, um, this particular piston has a uh, one piece Teflon sealing ring. So you can go back with one of those, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, they also have the uh, iron rings as well in the ceiling ring kits. And then, as I mentioned, we're not gonna be reinstalling, um, at least I don't think with this transmission, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but um, I have a feeling I'm gonna be, um, if I use it for anything high performance, I'm gonna be deleting the 2.3 accumulator altogether. Uh, if I do go back with it and I decide to keep the accumulation active, then um, I probably will just simply reuse the um, factory spring, but I'll be acquiring an aluminum piston. All right, let's check the uh, detent, detent regulator valves, make sure that they're moving free and nothing's dragging or hanging up on us. And then that'll be it for the valve body. So here are the valves in question. There's the spring. And then here are the two valves. So let's see if I can get that out of the shadow. Yeah, they, they feel perfectly fine. No dragging. Nothing feels weird. Okay. They're gonna stay in there. That'll go in the jet wash and then uh, we'll go ahead and reassemble it. <clears throat> I'll probably just for the sake of uh, filming, cause again, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing ultimately, but I'm probably just gonna reinstall the uh, factory piston and spring. Um, I mean, I will put an aluminum piston in there, but I'm not gonna do anything different uh, with the accumulation itself. You know, I'm gonna keep the circuit active for now. Okay, uh, that's the disassembly. So we'll film the reassembly uh, in a couple of days or so and post it to the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your viewership. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. Any comments, any feedback. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day or evening, and we'll catch you on the reassembly video.